Hi guys and welcome to my new YouTube channel and welcome to my first video. Quickly about me, I'm a vinyl lover, I like music, I like vintage audio gear, my favorite genres are heavy metal, hard rock, classic rock and I'm a sucker for 80s pop music. But today I'm going to show you my vinyl collection of my favorite metal band of all times, you guessed it, Iron Maiden. And if I have uh, energy for another video today or in the next days, I'll do a follow-up video with not just my studio albums of Maiden, but all the other albums I have. So stay tuned. Iron Maiden was formed in 1975 by bass player Steve Harris. And to many, it's the band of the new wave of heavy metal. Their self-titled debut album was released in 1980 with singer Paul Diano. This was also the debut of Maiden's mascot, Eddie who was initially intended for a punk band. Top songs for me on this album are Iron Maiden and Running Free. Paul remained Maiden singer for the second album, Killers, in 1981. Both albums were milestones in metal history. And my favorite songs on Killers are Wrathchild, Murders in the Remorgue, and Killers. They did release, not a studio album, but a live EP, Maiden Japan, in 1981. This was the last recording with Paul. Um, and I have the 33 and a third version that contains five live tracks. There's also a 45 RPM that only contains four tracks. Later that year, uh, he was released and replaced by Bruce Dickinson, who was Maiden's singer from 1981 to 1992. And then he returned in 1999 and remains Maiden's singer for today. And with Bruce on board, Maiden released The Number of the Beast on March 22nd in 1982. This was the debut for Bruce on vocals, but also the last album of Clive Burr, who was replaced from, by Nico McBrain on drums. The Number of the Beast was voted fourth most important metal album of all time by Rolling Stones magazine, only topped by Black Sabbath's debut and by Black Sabbath's Paranoid, and on number one, Metallica's Master of Puppets. One of my top three Maiden songs of all times is on this album, and it's Hallowed Be Thy Name. In 2022, Maiden released the 40th anniversary edition of Number of the Beast. This one includes the bonus record, Beast Over Hammersmith, a live recording from March 1982 a show at the legendary Hammersmith Odeon in London, England. And this is a cool three record album. In 1983, Maiden released Peace of Mind, which was my first Maiden album and I had it on cassette. Yes, that dates me, cassettes. Besides the killer song and one of the most recognizable Eddie images, The Trooper, Peace of Mind has Revelation on it, Flight of Icarus, and Die With Your Boots On, songs that you will always hear today when they play live shows. Needless to say, this is one of my favorite Maiden albums. Power Slave followed in 1984, and it has a cool Egyptian theme cover. It is one of my other top three Maiden songs, Aces High. This one is often the first song to open a Maiden show. Except for the last tour, I believe they closed with Aces High this time. Other monster hits on this album are Two Minutes to Midnight and Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner. Somewhere in Time followed in 1986 with its futuristic Cyborg Eddie cover. This was another great Maiden album with killer songs like Caught Somewhere in Time, Wasted Years or Strange in a Strange Land. All songs you will hear at Maiden shows. Seventh Son of a Seventh Son was released in 1988, and this was Maiden's seventh studio album. And many say, eh, they're weakest to date. I, however, love this album, and just by listening to songs like Moonchild, Can I Play With Madness, which had an amazing music video, The Evil That Men Do, Seventh Son of a Seventh Son, and The Clairvoyant, how can you say it's a weak album? Decide for yourselves. No Prayer for the Dying came out, and with that, Yannick had replaced Adrian on guitar. Wow, a shock to many Maiden fans. I personally don't care for this album as much, although I like the title song, Bring Your Daughter to the Slaughter, and a couple of others on this album. 
to me, this was the weakest Maiden album to date. In 1992, Maiden released Fear of the Dark. Its title song is the last of my top three Maiden songs of all time. And usually their last song at concerts, except again for the last tour. They actually opened with this song. But then after the album was released, Bruce shocked the world. He announced his departure from Maiden. 1995 rolled around and this started the quick period of Blaze Bailey as frontman. That's per personally not my favorite uh, Maiden period, but their first album, X Factor, had some cool songs. Uh, and Sign of the Cross is one of the songs that is still played today. The cover art is, however, amazing. Virtual Eleven was the second and last album with Blaze. And like the previous album, not my favorite. I think only the Clansman is a regular played song live. In 2003, Dance of the Death was released. Sorry, 2000 marks another milestone in Maiden's history. Bruce Dickinson and Arian Smith returned to Maiden for good. And Brave New World is the first album that Maiden had with three guitar players. That gives it a super powerful song. Songs that stand out to me on this album are Blood Brothers and The Wicker Men. Now we get to 2003 and Maiden releases Dances, Dance of the Death. And that was followed by A Matter of Life and Death. And then Final Frontier. All three albums were okay, but not amazing to me. However, The Final Frontier peaked at number one in 28 countries. A Matter of Life and Death was the first album in Iron Maiden's career to enter the US Billboard charts in the top 10. And all three albums are super hard to find unless you're willing to pay a pretty penny for them, since not many records were printed at that time well, because of the popularity of the CD and the beginning of streaming. Many fear that this was the end of Iron Maiden because of the word final in the title. A good five years passed and The Book of Soul came out in 2015. And they had a great tour along with this, with this album. I think I saw two shows on that tour. I really liked the album. I loved the cover art, but critics didn't like it as much. Tears of a Clown is a great song on this album. It was a tribute slash based on the uh, story of comedian Robin Williams' issues with depression and his su uh, suicide. Senjitsu came out in 2021, also supported with a tour, and I took my 14-year-old daughter to this, her first Iron Maiden show, and she loved it. She got her own jacket with a Fear of the Dark back patch, and, and we had a blast. The album is a little bit slower, but the artwork and the stage design was simply amazing. I have the three LP version, and my favorites on this album are the title song Senjutsu and the writing on the wall. I hope you enjoyed my quick video about my studio albums on vinyl from Maiden. And in my next video, I'm going to do the other 14, 15 vinyl albums I have of Iron Maiden that are not typical studio albums. Thanks again for watching and let me know in the comments if you enjoyed it. Have a good one. Bye.